Hi, my name is Rochelle Smith, entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author. Last time, I highlighted the importance of defeating the Goliaths in your life. And as I stated, we all have Goliaths in our lives, and we've all faced Goliaths in our lives. But much like David, we have what it takes to overcome and make our dreams come true, make our goals happen. Okay, whatever we're trying to do, we have what it takes. We'll persevere and not give up. All right, so we have what it takes, and don't ever forget that. And this time, I actually want to, to highlight something, actually highlighting another one of Rochelle's reads that fits in actually quite nicely with this title, is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Folks, this is a classic. If there's literally a top 10 book that I've ever read in my life, this is one of them, because it explains why, in just awesome detail, eye-opening insight on why some folks are so successful. And so if we think about statistics class, any type of research methods class, you, you'll learn the importance of what a bell curve is. Okay, so we know a bell curve, you're talking about a segment of the population or people in general, okay, any type of group, okay, if we, statistically speaking, most people fall under that bell. That's a, the biggest, largest percentage of a group or a population is going to fall under that bell. Okay, the average or the median. Okay, the mean. They're all under that particular bell. But what I want to highlight in this particular book is those people on a positive, very small, very small percentage of people on that positive end of the scale, the very beginning. Those are outliers. That's what we can tell actually on each end. On either end, it can be considered outliers. But what he is talking about in this book is the segment, very small, very small percentage of a population who goes on to become ultra, super, uber successful. Okay, and he talks about why that's the case. And I wanted to highlight that for you here today because folks often, you'll hear people say, oh, well this person, for example, he highlights Bill Gates. We know Microsoft's co-founder, Bill Gates, super, super successful. So people look at him and say, oh, well they've got the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they're giving all this money and they're so rich. I wish I were them. I wish I had their bank account. I wish I had their level of success. Okay, but what people fail to realize is that, you know, super successful people just don't, you know, it, it doesn't happen by happenstance. Okay, it happens because folks make a decision and they're willing to do what it takes for as long as it takes to see their dreams come true, to see their goals happen, to make their milestones happen. Okay, and as he alludes to in this book, just awesome, awesome, awesome book. <laughs> you can tell I really, really like this one, is that these books are willing to pay the price. Okay, so we look at just take Bill Gates, for example. Okay, so we learn the story. We learn the, 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 the story of Bill Gates growing up. Okay, he had a passion for computers, computer science, programming, and coding from a very young age. And so we think about, okay, school's out. It's almost not officially summertime yet, but school's out. Okay, what do most kids do? Well, they kind of hang out and take a break from school take a break from studying. Of course, not all kids, but most do that. Okay, and, and, and Bill Gates could have had that same opportunity, but he was spending his nights and weekends when school was in session, and he was spending his summer vacations and summer breaks somewhere coding, somewhere programming, somewhere learning the intricacies of computer science and what it would take to ultimately make him to be super successful. Okay, same is true, we just, LeBron James, okay? He's redefined, the, the game in the NBA, okay, just an awesome, awesome talent. Been in the league for a long time. So people will look at him and say, well, you know, he's so successful, he has all this money, and wow, he's able to do some amazing things. Okay, <laughs> but if you studied the life of LeBron James, as I highlighted that awesome book that he and Bill Bussinger, Buzz Buzzinger wrote a few years ago, Shooting Stars, you'll learn. Okay, his passion for the game of basketball started at a very young age. Okay, so he was spending countless hours on the court, countless hours practicing, countless hours, per hours perfecting his craft, mastering the game of basketball. Okay, several, several, several weeks ago, I highlighted the importance of the power of belief and other people believing in you. So yes, not only does LeBron believe in himself and your Bill Gates and all these other successful people, but also they had other people that believed in them and that were willing to support them. Okay, so Bill Gates, his parents were, were there supporting him as he pursued his passion for computers and computer science. 
LeBron James, you know, with it in highlights, the, the awesome relationship he, he had then, of course, continues to have with his high school basketball coach in Akron. Okay, very successful, believed in him, was willing to pour countless hours into this young man to help him master the game and to become great. Okay, and that's true in, in just any endeavor of life. Okay, so we, we, there's a price to be paid. And that's why when we look at if we were to draw kind of where people fall, you know, in terms of success, whether you can measure that, of course, in many different ways. But if you look at the super successful people, when all the other people in their cohort age group were doing one thing, they were off somewhere doing something entirely different, pursuing their passion, you know, perfecting their craft, doing whatever they had to do to become successful. Okay, and that's just something where, where whatever you're passionate about, you know, whatever, I mean, that will truly, I mean, that's kind of a guiding light when you think about how to become an outlier in life. Okay, Mariah Carey, we know that she's, she's famous for her multi-level octave voice. Okay, well, guess what? I mean, how do you think she made that happen? <laughs> years and years and years and hours 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 of practice. Okay, perfecting that. I'm thinking, yes, you know, genetics play a huge role. You know, if you look at somebody athletically speaking and say, well, oh, you know, well, this person is so great and they're able to do this, this, this much. Okay, but there's also a part of just putting in the time and the effort that's also a huge part of that success equation. Okay, so genetics or being born into the right family, yeah, that may be, that may be the case and, and that may be true in some cases, but think about that. Those people who are truly successful are people that worked hard, put in the time, put in the effort, did whatever they had to do to make it happen. Okay, you'll often hear kids say, well, I wish I could get into Harvard, or I wish I could get into an Ivy League school, or, you know, I should be able to get into one of the top universities in this country. Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> Those who do get into schools like that don't just wake up one day, you know, if, unless they are already highly academically inclined and have done extremely well, you know, despite not really having the goal of, of you know, att attending a school like that, which is very rare, okay, but the schools, the, the kids who do get into universities like that have been preparing pretty much their whole life, okay, because those universities want to see a track record of academic success as well as extracurricular involvement, but particularly, they're known for academics, and so that means they want to see, I mean, you see people I've met, I've met, you know, fifth graders, I've met fourth graders, I've met, you know, sixth graders, Tell me about the list of colleges you want to go to. They'll rattle out, rattle off some schools, okay, because they know they're working towards that. Okay, they're not just waking up in 12th grade saying, oh yeah, I want to get into these schools. No, they've been preparing. They've been preparing, and they're, they're well prepared, quite honestly, when they apply. Okay, so it's going to take time, it's going to take effort. And these kids, by the way, is, again, here's a summer example. Those kids are taking a break, not really studying. Okay, these kids are somewhere at math camps, somewhere at science Olympiads, science competitions during the summer, going to class, you know, attending very late night study groups. Um, I know kids even right here in Novi that go to the Saturday uh, academic programs who are learning math and science and other disciplines as well. Think about that. I know kids, and this is true of course all over this country, who are not just in school Monday through Friday, up until whenever the, the bus, it's time for the bus to pick them up or drop them off. No, they're coming home. They're putting in some serious hours, but they're working towards a goal. They, they want to be an outlier. They want to be different, and they're doing what it has to take to make it happen. But folks, I challenge you today. You have what it takes to be an outlier. You have what it takes to be an outlier in the workplace. You have what it takes to be an outlier in your community. You have what it takes to be an outlier in your church. You have what it takes to be an outlier in terms of your family and having a, a family that's on the positive end of that scale. Okay, we all do. We all have potential. And so but what I want to do today is just to inspire, to challenge you and to encourage you to pursue that potential. Despite what anyone told you, you you're not good enough. Okay, you're not going to amount to anything. You don't have what it takes. I'm asking you to flip the script today and make some decisions, make some positive changes in your life. Do whatever it takes to be successful. Okay, don't be like most people that are jealous and that are haters and envious of those who are successful. Do what it takes to become one of those. You have what it takes, I promise you. 
but I highly recommend this book. But more importantly, I just highly challenge you and just urge you to know deep down you can be an outlier. You can be successful. You don't have to settle in life. You know, that's one of my life mantras. Don't ever settle for less than the best that life has to offer. But as you'll learn, you do have a role to play and it will require sacrifice on your part. So thanks so much for your time. Make it a wonderful day.